guys, welcome back to the channel. Main line of uh, mixed air juice. Heading down the road, but they seem to just want to go across to the big lambs over there. That's alright, we're going to move on. Go girls! There we go. Sit down, slum! Sit! 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 Hey, listen. Gotta love these wide gateways. I do love that site. Big, well, it's not a big mob of use, really. But there's about a thousand there. Just strung out. Quiet, Pearl! Stop mucking around. Awesome. There they go, stringing up behind the quarry. Past the poor old dead land cruiser that I need to get up to the shed. Poor old girl. These are uh, looking good. Um, not great, but good considering the season we've had. They're still working on cleaning up crappy, shitty pasture right now. They've oh. got quiet. They've got two paddocks to go. Um, yeah, maybe maybe a third one. And the ram goes out in about three weeks. Well, the main main ram, main mobs get their ram in about three weeks. There's a uh, wee mob starting on Monday. So, yeah, first time we've ever done that. That's going to be quite interesting. But, yeah, so uh, still got a bit of work to do getting these girls up to weight, but... Gonna put a bit of nitrogen on hopefully this week and uh, get a bit more feed around the place. And we might just go back to the old flushing, I think, this year. Just, especially the big mob, just shift them on every day regardless of how much feed's left and uh, try and look after those residuals a wee bit while feeding them as well as we can. And just for those that uh, aren't aware, by residual, what I mean is uh, how much grass we leave behind after the grazing. So, sort of a bit of a hard one. At this time of year, quality of regrowth is not a concern because it should be pretty good. But yeah, the shorter we graze it, the better the quality that comes back is, but the lower the quantity. So just got to juggle that depending on what time of year it is. So at this time of year, we don't want to be erasing paddocks. We want to leave a decent cover on them. And that way they'll hopefully keep growing a bit more because uh, yeah, we're, we're end of March now. So growth is starting to slow, slow down a wee bit, which is... Uh, Always to be expected, um, heading into winter. So, just what we've got to work with. Just a bit frustrating this year because we have got a lot of lambs on still that haven't done very well. You don't mind when you've got a whole lot of lambs on around that 45, 50 kilo mark that you know are going to kill big weights. But, yeah, we've got a lot of 36s this year. Uh, they should be better than that now, but a couple of weeks ago they were 36. So, they're just, they're just not growing very well. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it can be a bit demoralising when you're you're used to a sort of 20, even slightly more than 20 kilo average carcass, and we might finish the season at an 18, which is still, we might, I don't know yet, it's still not bad going, but uh, yeah, just not what we're used to. So at the moment we've got the ewe lambs, the replacement ewe lambs and the uh, light turtles in here. But the main light of turtles over there, they're... They're not really cleaning things up, but they're not, uh, it's not getting away from them either. So they're, they're, they're holding that paddock where it is, we'll say. It's it's going to stay rough. I'm not worried about that. Um, crop's looking good. You can see the maize down there's had a bit of a bit of frost damage, but we expected that. So it's still looking quite good, actually, to be fair. Um, better than I thought. Swede's looking great. Grass up that way is nice and green. That poor girl there had a, an eye picked out by a seagull. So... Uh, She's supposed to be in that mob getting looked after her, but she didn't want to run through the gate. And we've got this mob, that main line of use, we're just shifting. They're the ones we took out oh, when we did that condition scoring, whenever that was, maybe three weeks ago. Um, that were a bit light, and they've picked up quite nicely. And then further away, that's our, way, way up there, that's our old girls and the real light ones that uh, we're going to look after really well this year, and they'll be off to the works next year. Tudus coming in for their jabs. We've got uh, second camp, uh, your camp oh, oh. quiet. 
um, vaccine against Campylobacter. And we've still got the Depidine to give them as well, which is a uh, an iodine supplement. Just like humans need uh, iodine supplementation when they're pregnant, so sheep. Just helps with uh, fewer issues at birth. Yeah, so got them all crutched up yesterday. No more dags hanging off them. They're looking not bad considering the season they've had. Considering there's should be 620 odd here. Sorry, just shut the gate. Yeah. This is really hard to do with one hand. There we go. Yeah, considering damn near a quarter of them land when they weren't supposed to. Um, pretty happy. There we go. All jabbed. All crutched. Lighter ones in here that we took out a while ago have been drenched. Oh, girls. Uh, no, they're not going to want to run. This bloody gate does not stay where it should. So, not ideal. No, pretty happy with them, eh? Especially considering what they've been through. Yeah. We'll get a wait on them in uh, 10 days or so. Yeah, see that bloody gate there? Really should do something about that. Right, so got a wee bit of fertiliser to get on. Um, chucking a wee bit of notching on these young grass paddocks in their last bit of uh, capital for it. No bird's nest in there, it's always good to see. Looks pretty good. It's got like 150 years in that oil. Back end oil's good. Yeah, we use um, superphosphate for capital ferret on most of the farm, but the first year young grass paddocks we just use DAP on, uh, DAP sulfur super, it's got a bit of extra sulfur in it to keep things going, but uh, yeah, the idea is that we just get a bit of nitrogen a little bit cheaper than uh, mixing the two together, and we mix a bit of sustained bit of urea with it just to top it up to where it needs to be. But yeah, it gets two nice little doses instead of one big clump, just when the plants are a bit young, they might not be able to soak it all up so well, so spreads things out and it's a good, good hit of pee just to try and keep that soil fertility up a wee bit. Stuff costs like 700 bucks a ton, so we kind of want to get it all. And uh, I didn't think I'd get it all in one load either, but it looks like we did, so it's handy. How's that for damn near perfect? 
I mean, obviously, every time I put a uh, full ton of ferret on 20 hectares, I've only got that much left. <laughs> yeah, nah. No. That's pretty spot on, though. Here's the light used in the yards for crutching. Here's Slum! Look out, Pearl! Here's Slum! Here's Slum! That dog's going deaf. I'm going to take him to the vet soon and get him checked out, because uh, it's not fair yelling at him if he is. But, you know, they're, they're not looking bad. I mean, admittedly, I took a third of my use out. I was being pretty fussy, but there's plenty of fat ewes in that mob, and there's not much of a tail end in there, so... Yeah, pretty happy. Oh, there goes the ewes all top crutched, ready for mating. Just got to get them into their mobs. Oh, not this next week, the week after now, I think. Yeah. Leave them on uh, quality control for a bit longer. Ow, ow. Quiet. We only end up doing like 25% of these ones, which is really good, because it's massive time saving. So, oh, what's there? It'll be 1,500 ewes in those two mobs, and uh, took us about four and a half hours of crutching. So, yeah, pretty, pretty stoked with that. Right, so we're just going to make a start on this fencing. I say make a start, I got the strainers in the other day, but uh, Ted wanted to stop for a look at the corn. Quite a bit taller than you, isn't it, Ted? Yes. Do you want to sneak in there through that gap? Yeah? What do you reckon? Is that pretty cool? Yeah. Yeah? Man, just imagine if we planted this two months earlier, like we sort of toyed with the idea of. Are there any corn cobs on there yet? You can't see any? I think they grow a bit further down, dude. I don't actually know. But I don't think we'll see any in this crop. They grow in here, aren't I think they grow down about here somewhere, dude. Mm. I don't I don't know where they grow. We might find out next year, eh? Yeah. Hey, eh? we go in a little bit? Yeah. We'll try not to snap any off, although we probably will. Hey? Yeah. Eh? Oh, is there a bloody thistle there, is there? You stand on it. You squish it. Hey? Eh? You squish that bloody thistle. There we go. Man, that stuff's way taller than you, isn't it? Yeah. Is it pretty cool? Yeah. See, <laughs> this is like three months growth. This is awesome. Um, provided it stays standing, we're going to plant it about six weeks earlier next year. Oh, we might yeah. do a couple of goes. We might plant some six weeks earlier, some three weeks earlier. We might do some back at 30 inch spacings. We might do some sticking at 15. I don't know. But uh, that's pretty bloody awesome. Where are we going, dude? Can't even see you. There you go. Is there? Don't you get lost in the maze, eh? Doesn't bloody look straight, but it is. How many posts are the tent? 80 hundred? Yeah. Man, that's going to take a long time to bang in, isn't it? It's a lot of work. Yeah. Right, so fencing. Plan is to go from that post way over there to another one. And then uh, down around the edge of the creek here. All the way down to there. It's going to give us four and a half hectares over there. And then just up here somewhere, we're going to put a gateway in. Well, and run straight down that way. Good man, Ted. Someone's having fun playing on the side of the hill. Great stuff. Uh, yeah, which will give us like a three and a half hectare paddock here and another four and a half hectare paddock here, or the other way around, something like that. Yeah, the, the paddocks are just too big to manage. Um, we had a real growthy spring this year, and like just for a couple of weeks, and it bit us in the ass big time. Yeah, good man. Um, so yeah, we just decided, uh, bugger it, time to bite the bullet and do it. Should have been done, possibly should have been done a long time ago, but no point worrying about that, we're here to do it now. Gotta love my father and uncle's homemade stuff. I'll get a good spinning jenny one day, but hey, for now it works. Right, so that's the end of this strain. So, as you can see, going back up there to the bike, around the edge of the gully. Right, I'm going to see if I can get Ted to hold the camera for me. Come over here, Ted. Come over here, man. 
And can you make the camera see what I'm doing to the post? Mm -hmm. You just, it, would get, it doesn't matter if you get it wrong, dude. It's okay. You just hold it for me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, you just you just point the camera here where I'm tying the knot. You lift it up a little bit. Can the camera see what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. Good man. All right. There's plenty of tail under there. Something like that. I'm not a professional at this by any means. Well, I really don't like fencing, but I need the fences. So. How's that going, Ted? Good. Good stuff. Probably doing too many here or not enough, I don't know, but it works. Hold it up, dude. Bit of a twist around like that and it breaks off. Yes, Ted, you can walk through the creek. Is it shallow? Yes, it's shallow. So this is uh, sort of ends up looking like, and uh, what are we doing here? Hang on a minute. This is going to be box strainer. Got to make sure that goes on that side. So when this all pulls up, it'll have to stay out that side a wee bit. So by box strainer, what I mean is we'll put a... There's no water. There's no water in the creek. No. That might be why my Swedes are looking a bit dry. Hey? Eh? So we're going to put a post in here. Another one from the top of that one. Across to there. And then a wire from the bottom of that strainer to the top of that post that pulls back that way. You'll see when we do it. Which stops the tra strainer from pulling that way. You can put a bit of pressure back that way on it. You don't want to come walk back up to the motorbike with me? You're going to play down here. Okay, you see if you can find any fish, but don't hurt them. So there's our wire strained up. You can see it's just off to that side of that post, so that's good. It can go around the uh, box strainer when we get it done. And you see we're on that side of that post. But then when we go down there, you can't really see, I'll go down for a look. Yeah, so we're on that side of that post, but then we come here, and we're on this side. Because uh, we've got a slight wee corner here. And you always want the post to take the pain, not the staple. So there's other ones up to the bike. We're all on that side. Then just by the bike, we'll switch back over that side. We're that side the whole way up the hill. Sorry, camera got a bit of an angle on there. Tell you what, if there's one thing this kid loves, it's water. Hey, Ted. You're just there right at home in the water, aren't you? Yeah. Even a muddy, swampy bit like this. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, the purpose of this wire is just to give us a nice straight line for our posts. Um, on this strain, we haven't run into anywhere where it's still touching the ground. Hey? Eh? You should have bought your scissors to cut all the thistles down, you reckon? That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Yeah, you'd be here a long time been a great year for thistles this year. Anywhere that we don't mow, they've just been a nightmare, but that's what it is. They've been here for a hundred years. But yeah, so this wire, just to give us a nice straight line to put our posts in, because uh, we're sheep farmers and we like straight fences. Nice and straight, just looks so good. But yeah, um, nowhere down here is actually touching the ground between posts, but there is this gap here where it's like two posts high. Um, so what we'll do is just down in that hollow there, we'll bang one of the first posts in there, try and get it round about, um, pretty bloody close within an inch hopefully, and there's another one just down there as well, a bit of a stretch. Um, yeah, so that takes care of that. We'll just got to put all these spacings in first, so. Always, always, always keep these labels too, because then you can put it back on and uh, you know which wire is your end wire, and you don't grab the, the start of the call by accident. Um, just take note, wire mark, New Zealand made, 100%, awesome. Anyway guys, that's a uh, bit of what we've been doing this last week, 10 days. Sorry it's been a while since I got a video up, but uh, had a few urgent things come up. But, but yeah, thanks for watching that guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time.